Hello, welcome back to Outbuilding. Today we're gonna to try to put some utility in this utility trailer. We're gonna build sides for it, as, but we're gonna design that so that we can add to that later with a head rack and some other things for different ways to add utility to the trailer. Um, the trailer came as a strict flat, flat bed. It doesn't have any side rails or any other parts on it. And so we're gonna build up from there. So we're gonna do some woodworking for that and we're gonna use some metal, um, aluminum in this case, because this is an aluminum trailer. The idea being that we don't have to ever finish that, it won't corrode, and in a marine climate, when we bring it out to like the coast, it's not gonna rot out like things normally would. So it's lightweight. We'll add a ton of utility to this trailer and keep it flexible. Let's get started with that. To start with the design, I first pulled the trailer and the Jeep together, got out a measuring tape and started measuring things. The former trailer we had, the first trailer we had was galvanized, super light and pretty effective, but it was really pretty small and the walls never came down so it was hard to move things on, on the flatbed. The second trailer we had was much bigger. It had wooden sides that dropped in and out in stake pockets, kind of like what we're going to do here, but the trailer itself was really heavy, had no brakes and was the sides were kind of falling apart. So with these, these measurements and these past things, we can sit down and start working on a design. For the design, we started with just a, a model of the platform. So I've got the trailer measured out and um, the Jeep sort of in their proper orientation so I can make sure that everything clears that. And to that, I'm gonna start by adding just sides. So the sides, I came up with an idea similar to the old trailer with uh, pressure treated plywood and pressure treated um, dimensional lumber so that it'll hold up to the weather and then aluminum corners here that have sort of sleeved um, stakes, if you will, that will hold it. Those stakes continue up on the top so that we can build up on top of this platform. So they're, they're, they're there in front, there's a couple, the intermediate one and a front one. And then in back, there's bigger tubes um, that will accept the tailgate. And that tailgate sits down in those, those stakes. But when you take the tailgate out, you can add in instead, you can add a ladder rack up on top so we can have a aluminum frame that is in the front there and a bigger frame in the back and then sort of a ladder rack across the top and there's space all the way through it it'll clear the Jeep and I can that's a 20 foot piece of PVC um, schedule 40 so that's sort of a typical kind of thing you might carry that's long on top of the on top of the rack but then I want to be able to also turn around and let's see here if I flip that ladder over, then I can walk. That's um, six foot three clearance in there so that you can walk inside there pretty easily. And to that, I can add some doors in the back that open, sort of like a normal uh, cargo trailer. And then a front panel to, about to take on the wind as driving down the freeway. And then I'm thinking of using snaps that are secured, riveted into the aluminum on the sides, and then a sort of a, a canvas cover. So this would be like weather resistant, it wouldn't be weather proof, but it would be good for carrying things in our inclement weather we have in the Northwest, and also sort of secure things inside um, with the door to get in the back. So those doors would actually hinge into the upper hoop that goes over the top. The ladder rack flips upside down to create the structure and kind of a roof, and then there's a couple more members there. So it's a little bit ambitious and I don't know that we'll get that far, but certainly the sides I know I'll use. I've used those before and I think the ladder rack is something that would really be useful now because I do that on the on, on a really long tray that sits on the flatbed and that, that ends up scraping the, the ground when I go over bumps and stuff. It's just a little bit walk, awkward. So having that ladder rack would be nice. So that's the design. Um, I'll switch over to CAD, I mean to sheet drawings and I'll draw this out, get dimensions on it and everything and then can start working on the construction. There's a lot of redundancy in the little tabs that hold the sand this or the aluminum pieces on the edges of the trailer sides. And so I decided to go ahead and cut those with the CNC rig. Um, I do the cam code in a weird way. I start with some C code, which um, I write in a text editor. Then I compile that code and uh, it creates a little executable that when I run that, it'll generate the code for what I'm doing. And this is just a way I've gotten used to it. I wouldn't really suggest it um, is the easiest way, but I'm used to it. Um, I then I found this this clever little editor or viewer on the internet, and I'll share this in the description below. Uh, it's just a place that you can take your C code, and if I take my code and I dump it into the uh, 
into the viewer, I can kind of look at the path it's going to take and I can walk through the code here on the side and uh, sort of simulate what it's going to look like when it, when it cuts. And so that's useful for me just to kind of preview my code and make sure that I'm on the right track. The, the CNC mill actually has similar software, but this is a great way to get a first pass of that done. So I started here, got my file done to cut, the, cut some radius corners on the, the uh, aluminum tabs and also drill holes in them. And then I moved over to the mill to start go ahead and machining those. With the tabs all machined, cleaned up, we can move on to the other pieces of aluminum componentry. That meant just measuring out to, to length based on the plans, cutting to length on the bandsaw, and then filing a little bit just to clean up the bird edges before getting ready to weld.
Okay, so most of the welding's done. I got the, there's a couple little extra pieces here for the upper part of the, the sidewalls to hold the head rack later on. And then each corner has a pair of pieces. There's a, there's a lower part that's on the side and then there's an upper part that's on the tailgate or on the front. And these things sit, um, they stack on top of one another at the ends of, the, end, ends of those walls. And then I'll put a little keying peg, I'll weld this little keying peg inside there. They'll sleeve down just like a stake and lock up the corners of the, of the trailer. Um, these work pretty well. I'll, I'll now um, clean these up a little, get these pegs stacked in, and then I can start working on the wood. The welds look pretty good. I used a high frequency setting, which I'd not used before on aluminum, and I don't have that perfect stack of dimes yet, but I'm getting better with the welds, and they're certainly strong. They'll hold up pretty well. So one challenge I came into when I was putting these pegs in is the pegs are a little bit smaller than the tube they go in. So what I did is I drilled holes in the, um, in the outer tube and then I can set these in and place spacers in between to hold it up tight against the wall there. Um, I've got a mark on it to keep it straight. So with those in place, I can then weld in the weld in these holes and um, and and freeze those points. And I think that's called a rosette. I'm not sure, but anyway, here's here's the one I did earlier for the for the other side. Holds it in there pretty well. And then the the tube is a little bit offset in the spacing, and that'll actually work well for the way it wants to orient when putting it together with the trailer. Okay, the metal pieces are all done. I got the, um, the stubs in there with the little rosette welds. These pieces will, so like this is a side and the front will drop into it like a stake pocket. Um, I've got little additional stake pockets that'll sit up on the sides of the, of, of the trailer to accommodate the top rack. And then this is, um, I had to, I didn't have a single peg for these, so I used a double peg. Um, use the same rosettes in those, and this is the tailgate facing your camera there. Um, the tailgate will drop in and, and stay put with those on both sides. So I'll build up the wood. This is just sort of the, the four corners of the box and uh, put the, that together. I got real lucky on this. This is the scrap I had after doing the metal. Um, I had ordered it online and got it just right, so I was pretty fortunate. Anyway, we'll move on to the wood.